Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people. Teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Colossians, Colossians chapter 1, and we are at verse, we're going to start at verse 12. Colossians chapter 1. What time one. is it? Okay, 720. I told you Revelation 4 is very short, it's to the point. Colossians. Okay, Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. Yes, sir. Let's sir. wait, bear with me. Let me get it with you so I can read along. Yes, sir. Mm. All right, go ahead. Giving thanks unto the Father, which made us meet. Now, the be- reason I wanted to go here, because remember, it said that these angels gave praise and thanks to him that sat on the throne. So in correlation, the Apostle Paul is teaching our brothers and sisters in Colossae to give thanks unto the Father. Go ahead. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, mm-hmm. who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. And have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So it says, who have delivered us from the power of darkness. Who have delivered us from the power of darkness. That's the kingdom of Satan. That's Babylon. That's Rome. That's the kingdom of darkness. That's Satan's realm. Real quick, if anybody knows where it is, y'all help me. It says that this world, let me see. It says the kingdom of darkness. Hold on, let me try. Somebody might know it off the top. Where's uh, one of them precept brothers? Where's Officer Gedaliah? You know every precept in the Bible. Kingdom of darkness. Anybody know what that is? No, not gross darkness. Uh, mm, darkness. Mm. Oh, Revelation 16.10. Thank you. That's it. Revelation 16.10. We read this earlier. We read this a few months back. Revelation chapter 16, verse 10. And the, and the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast. Upon the seat of the beast. The beast is a soul called white man. Go ahead. And his kingdom was full of darkness. And his kingdom was full of darkness. Go ahead. And they gnawed their tongues for pain. So where we live, brothers and sisters, this is the kingdom of darkness. Where the white man rules is the kingdom of darkness. What does that darkness translate to? Sin. Give me real quick, John 3. It might be verse where Christ said men love darkness rather than light. Then we're going to come back to Colossians. You got that formula of sin that you 19. Yes, sir. John chapter 3, verse 19. Watch this. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world. The light that came into the world is Christ, the Messiah. He's that light. He's that law keeper. He's that law giver. He was that law teacher. He was that man that magnified God's law, according to the book of Isaiah. Go ahead. And men love darkness rather than light. And men love darkness rather than light. Go ahead. Because their deeds were evil. Because their deeds are evil. Why? People like sin. Why? Because sin is fun. Sin is pleasurable, like it says in the book of Hebrews. Find me that thing. Find me that thing. Half of y'all in here know, all y'all in here should know what I'm talking about. Where it says, uh, the pleasures of sin for a season. Hebrews, is it 12 or 11? 11, 11, 24, get that. 
Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24. 25. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. To, rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season because it's temporary. You know how many brothers and sisters, they go out of their way to meet that brother or sister on Facebook. Then they get hit and they realize they got the monster now. So was the 15, 30 minutes of sin that, that you had so much pleasure in, was it really worth it? No, because now you got the monster. Now you want to know why God did that to you, because you had pleasure in sin, and that pleasure only lasts for a season. That brother or sister that sell drugs, and you know, they make big money quick, but they make good money quick, but you always what? Looking over your shoulder. You're always paranoid. You always think if it ain't the cops, the white man coming for you, it's the next drug dealer that's going to take you out. Who want to live like that? I don't want to live like that. The hell is this? The pleasure of sin, which is only for a season. Okay, let's go back to Colossians. Colossians chapter one, verse 14. Mm -hmm. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Even the forgiveness of sins. When we have, we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Right, because without Christ's sacrifice, we can do nothing. Remember what Paul said about it's human nature. Paul said, when I would do good, evil is always present. He said, the good that I would do, I do not. That's, true. That's in every man, every woman. Look at your children. Just put a piece of candy down and see what that child do with that. You ain't got to put it near him. Just let him see it. And just walk out the room, see if that candy stay there. <laughs> Give that child a toy and then take the ch toy from the child and see the response of the child. <laughs> Give it to another child and see if that child don't get up and bust that other child in the face. <laughs> it's in us. That evil nature is in us from the birth, from the womb it come out with us. You got to be taught the light. We got to be taught the laws of God. Where are we at, Officer Nechemiah? Uh, Colossians 1.15. Go ahead. Who is, the emit, who is the image of the invisible God? See that Christ is the image of the invisible God. Go ahead. The firstborn of every creature. And Christ is the firstborn of every creature. And he mean that thing. When Paul wrote that, he meant that. Christ is the firstborn. Him being the firstborn explains why John 3.16 says... Uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. People ask, what does it mean, his only begotten son? It means that because Christ is the firstborn of every creature. Give me that. Proverbs 8.22. It's explained right here. His only begotten son. What does it mean? He's the firstborn of every creature. It means exactly what it says. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 22. Mm -hmm. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way. Before his works of old. The me is Christ here. Although the chapter is going into wisdom. When you write this down. Write this down. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 24 tells you that Christ is the wisdom of God. So when you read in Proverbs 8 about wisdom. It's talking about Christ. So we're going to start at Proverbs 8 verse 22. Go ahead. Proverbs chapter 8 verse 22. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way. Before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. He said, I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. We don't watch this. When there were no depths. Meaning when there was no depths of seas or oceans. Go ahead. I was brought forth. Christ says, I was brought forth. Go ahead. When there were no fountains abounding with water. He says, when there was no fountains abounding with water. Go ahead. Before the mountains were settled. Before the mountains were settled. Before the hills was I brought forth. Christ says before the hills was I brought forth. Go ahead. While as yet he had not made the earth. While as yet the Lord had not made the earth. Go ahead. Nor the fields. Nor the fields. Nor the highest part of the dust of the world. Nor the highest part of the dust of the world. The mountains. Go ahead. When he prepared the heavens. When, he, when the father prepared the heavens. Go ahead. I was there. I was there. Go ahead. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth. When he set a compass upon the face of the depth. A, a, a circle is representing north, south, east, west. Go ahead. When he established the clouds above. Mm -hmm. When he strengthened the fountains of the deep. Mm -hmm. When he gave to the sea his decree that the water should not pass his commandment. 
when he appointed the foundations of the earth. Now watch verse 30 is the main point I want to get to. Then I was by him. Then I was by him. As one brought up with him. As one brought up with him. Go ahead. And I was daily his delight. I was daily the father's delight. Go ahead. Rejoicing always before him. He said I was the one rejoicing before the father. He said I came before everything was made. Christ said I was there. Go ahead. Rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth. Mm -hmm. And my delights were the sons of men. Because Christ was there when he said let us make man in our image. So Christ is telling you, I was the beginning of, before Michael was, I was there. Before Uriel, Raphael, I was the first of the creations of the Father. He said, I'm the first. <laughs> That's some heavy stuff. Let's go back now. This is why John the Baptist said, Christ was preferred before me. Go find me that in John, is it 119? Somewhere around there where he says that. John chapter 1. People talk, does the Lord have favorites? You better believe he got favorites. And it ain't you and me. <laughs> what, what verse is that? When they asked John, they said, are you, are you Christ? Are you the one? Verse 15. It's verse 15. John chapter 1, verse 15. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, this was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. For he was before me. Man, you got to know how deep John is talking there. You better read, go back and read Proverbs 8. Solomon revealed that thing. He said, hey, Christ was in the, he was the first of the father's creation. Christ was the number one. Now watch this. This helps, Proverbs 8 helps us understand John chapter 1 verse 1. Watch this. John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And the word was with God. Y'all remember what it, wait, 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 hold that. Go watch this. Go back to Proverbs 8. I know y'all forgot already. I know some of y'all done forgot what Christ said. Uh verse 30. Proverbs 8, verse 30. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 30. Then I was by him. As one brought up with him. See that? Then I was by him as one brought up with him. So when we go back to John chapter 1 and verse 1 again. John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was with God. That's the same thing we just read in Proverbs 8. Go ahead. And the word was God. And the word was God. Go ahead. The same was in the beginning with God. The same was in the beginning with God. That's explained in Proverbs 8. Go ahead. All things were made by him. That's why Christ said, before the earth was made, I was brought forth. Before the heavens was made, I was brought forth. Before the earth, the mountains, the hills, I was there. I was brought forth before all the depths of seas and oceans. Go ahead. And without him was not anything made that was made. Christ, John is saying about Christ. That without Christ, there was nothing made that was made. Why? Because Christ was the first of all things. He's the only begotten son. That's why he said, this is my son. This is my beloved son. Hear ye him. Was that it? What verse was that? That was verse 3. Now jump down to verse uh, 14. Verse 14. And the word was made flesh. Now this same word that was in the beginning with the father. Now he has come down upon the earth and was made flesh. Go ahead. And dwelt among us. And dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the father. Why was he the only begotten of the father? Because he was the first of all creations. That's when Revelation Christ said, I'm, he said he's what? Alpha and Omega. First and the last. Beginning and the end. He meant that. When he said that, he meant that. You better read Proverbs 8.22 down and get it sunk into your spirit. Okay, let's go back now to Colossians. Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. Mm -hmm. For by him were all things created. For by him were all things created. Go ahead. That are in heaven. That are in heaven. And that are in earth. And that are, that's, was explained in, was it not explained in Proverbs 8? It was explained. It was explained in John chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, 2. So we should not be, Christ is more than, oh, he's just a prophet. Oh, no, he's not. He's more than that. Go ahead. 
visible and invisible. Visible and invisible. Go ahead. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. Uh -huh. All things were created by him and for him. Paul said all things were created by him and for him. Go ahead. And he is before. Wait, what? Read that again. And he is before all things. That's what, that's what we did. We just read that. And he is before all things. Go ahead. And by him, all things consist. And by him, all things consist. Go ahead. Verse 18. And he is the head of the body, the church. See that? Christ is the head of the body, the church. Go ahead. Who is the beginning. See that? Christ is the beginning. The firstborn from the dead. And he's the firstborn from the dead. That in all things he might have the preeminence. That in all things he might have the preeminence. Give me that in Hebrews 12, 23. He is the head of the body, the church. You know, somebody told me on the radio camera when they said the church is the Roman Catholic church. I said, shut the hell up. You dumb as hell. <coughs> Hebrews chapter 12, verse 23. Now we go in because it says he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. Watch this. To the general assembly. To the general assembly. And church of the firstborn. And church of the firstborn. Who's the firstborn? Christ is the church. He's the head of the church of the firstborn. Because he's the firstborn from the dead. Was that it? No, sir. Go ahead. Which are written in heaven. Mm -hmm. And to God, the judge of all. And to the spirits of just men made perfect. Give me that one in Acts 7. Where it talks about the, it names the church. You get a Roman Catholic church. You got to be kidding me. You must be on crack. Give me that in Acts 7 where it names the church. It says this is the church that was in the wilderness. Yeah. Acts. Acts 7 and verse uh, 37 and 38. Yes, sir. 38 Acts. is the point, but we'll start at 37. Acts chapter 7, verse 37. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren. Like unto me. That's Christ. And believe it, he's more than a regular prophet. Go ahead. Him shall ye hear. Moses said, him shall ye hear. Watch this. Here's the point. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness. Now, the church that was in the wilderness with Moses was not the Roman Catholic church. This is the Israelites. The Israelites is the only church, which means general assembly, like we read in Hebrews 12. Read that again. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount of Sinai, uh -huh. and with our fathers, who received the lively oracles to give unto us. Who received the law to give unto us. That's what the lively oracles is talking about. So let's go back now. Let's go on back to Colossians. We was in chapter 1, and we was in reverse 18 again. Colossians chapter 1, verse 18. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Right, and Christ has the preeminence in all things. Remember, he's the firstborn from the dead. He's the first of God's creations. Go ahead. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. In Christ, all fullness dwells. Watch this. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, mm -hmm. by him to reconcile all things unto himself. Now, wait a minute. Pause there. People often read right by the word reconcile. Can we look up that word reconcile, Officer Alicia? The church reads right by that and see, everybody on the earth is being reconciled to the Lord. Really? Is that what reconcile goes into? Watch this, reconcile. We ain't going to just run past that. Put it on Google. Officer Alicia, let's take a look at it. I want to be able to see it. Uh, let's, no, this is fine. Read that. Blow it up big so we can see it. Definition of reconcile. To restore to friendship or harmony. Now watch this. Reconcile means to restore to friendship or harmony. Means you at one time had friendship. You at one time had harmony. You lost it. Now you must be reconciled, meaning brought back to uh, friendship or harmony. Like I said, watch this, 1 Corinthians 7. I'm going to show you that again. Don't, when, you are, when you men are teaching on the street, don't run by that word reconcile. 
Because a Christian will run by it. First Corinthians 7. Let's look at husbands and wives. First Corinthians 7 and verse 11. First Corinthians chapter 7, verse 11. Start at 10. Verse 10. And unto the married I command. Unto the married. This is about married people. Yet not I, but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband. But, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried. Or? Or be reconciled to her husband. Or be reconciled. Meaning what? Restored to friendship or harmony. Meaning you at one time had friendship. You lost it somehow. You got to be reconciled, meaning restored to friendship or harmony. So now watch this. Give me Ezekiel 45, 17. <clears throat> These are precepts y'all can go to once you get the definition of reconcile. Watch this. Ezekiel 45, 17. We should all be familiar with this. Ezekiel chapter 45, verse 17. And it shall be the prince's part to give burnt offerings. That's the priest. Uh -huh. And meat offerings and drink offerings in the feast and in the new moons and in the Sabbaths and all solemnities of the house of Israel. He shall prepare the sin offering and the meat offering and the burnt offering and the peace offerings to make reconciliation for the house of Israel. To make reconciliation, to reconcile the children of Israel. So what reconciled us to the father? Animal sacrifice during the time of Ezekiel. So when we go back to Colossians, what Paul's talking, remember Paul ain't talking about animal sacrifice. He's talking about the sacrifice of Christ. Watch this. Again, Colossians 1 and verse 20. Colossians chapter 1 verse 20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, which is the sacrifice of Christ. By him to reconcile all things unto himself. To reconcile all things to himself means what? To reconcile all the children of Israel. That's what it's talking about. So because here's the thought. If it was to reconcile all races on the earth, when were the Edomites ever in harmony or friendship with the Lord? When were the Jebusites or Philistines in friendship or harmony with the Lord? you got to ask a Christian a question. Mr. Christian, can you pull a scripture where the Edomites were in friendship or harmony with the Lord? Mr. Christian, can you show us a scripture where the Moabites or Ammonites were in friendship or harmony with the Lord? You won't find one verse, one chapter, not one book that goes into the other races being in friendship or harmony with the Lord. You'll only find that with the children of Israel. Everybody with me so far? Uh-huh. Let's read on. <coughs> what verse was that? Yes. Uh, you finished 20? Yes, sir. Jump down to verse uh, 25. Verse 25. Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Watch this. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations. We want to find out what is the mystery that has been hid from, from ages and from generations. Go ahead. But now is made manifest to his saints. But now is made manifest to the Israelites. Because that's the same according to Psalms. What is it? 148 verse 14. Right? Am I right? Yes, sir. Okay, watch this. To whom God would make known... What is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles? He says the northern kingdom, those are the Gentiles, they must be made aware of this mystery too. Which is what? Which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Most people don't understand who Christ is. He's the only begotten of the Father. Meaning what? He's the first of all creation of the Father. He's the one that was prophesied from the book of Genesis to come. Okay, when the, when the Lord says uh, his head, I can't quote, where it says you shall bruise his head and he shall bruise thy heel. All that's going into Christ, the ushering in of Christ, his purpose, his plan was to always bring Christ as the king of kings, Lord of lords through the nation of Israel. And that's what people reject to understand. They go, no, 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 he's not an Israelite. He's every, he's, he, he's all things. He's all colors. He's a rainbow coalition. No, he's not. He's of the, the tribe of Judah. That's right. That's right. He's a tribe of Judah. 
He come for the nation of Israel. That's right. And we're going to be rulers under him. We are joint heirs with him. And that's this mystery that the world don't want to accept. And they reject that thing right there. So only faith in Christ can give give us the understanding of scriptures. Give me that Luke 24. Luke 24. And before we close out, remind me to go back to uh, 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 the women over there about reconcile. Watch this. Yeah, you, you women get ready over there. You just get ready. What verse, Bishop? Uh, Luke 24, 45. Luke chapter 24, verse 45. Then opened he their understanding. Only Christ can open your understanding to scriptures, to spiritual understanding of scripture. Only Christ. This is why. I want you to think about Think about the yayas. And when I say the yayas, I'm talking about that group that go, they call themselves Yisrael. Not you. Not uh, with the brother. Not him. Not, I ain't talking about you online as Yisrael. I'm talking about the yayas. You know the yayas don't believe in Christ. Read that verse again. Then opened he their understanding. That they might understand the scriptures. This is why I want you to check out the yayas. Do y'all see these yayas at Old Testament? Do you see them guys on the streets changing and battling people face to face and understanding the scriptures? Do y'all see that? Nope. Never. They don't have the spirit of God in them. Why? Because they reject Christ. Only Christ can give you the spiritual understanding of scriptures. Sure, you can read the book of, you can read the Bible like a novel. You can do that. You can read Christian commentaries. You can do that. But to get the scriptural and spiritual understanding of scriptures, you must accept the Son of God as the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, as the Messiah. If you don't do that, you're going to be dumbing in a bag of nails. And you'll just be on Facebook running your damn mouth. You'll never hit the streets because you can't go toe to toe, blow for blow in the spirit with people. You'll be scared as hell. Give me that. Give me that. Jump up to verse 32. Verse 32. And they said one to another. Listen what these, uh, these disciples of Christ said. Did not our heart burn within us? Did not our hearts burn within us? While he talked with us by the way. And while he opened to us the scriptures. You see that? Did not our hearts burn within us when he what? When he did what? When he talked with us when by the way. When he talked with us by the way and did what? And while he opened to us the scripture. When it says open to us the scripture, I mean he was breaking it down for them to understand. These disciples, which was not, who was it? Go back to, where does it say who they was? What Verse chapter? 18. And the one of them whose name was Cleophas answering said unto him, art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? And when has it started, mm, yeah, 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 yeah. I think it starts at 13, and rest, let's read down real quick. <coughs> verse, verse 13. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. Right. Christ closed their eyes. They didn't recognize him. And he said unto them, what manner of communications are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad? And the one of them whose name was Cleopas. Right. So this wasn't Peter, James or John. This was another group of disciples that followed Christ. Go ahead. Answering said unto him, art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? And hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And, and he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and were before God and all the people. And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. Now jump down to verse 31. Verse 31. And their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. You got to picture this. When they recognized him, as he goes through all the scriptures with them, they recognized him, and he said he vanished. <laughs> he was gone. Read. Verse 32. And they said one to another, 
Did not our heart burn within us? We got to get to that point that when we hear the scriptures, our hearts burn within us. If you ain't, I know some of you knew, you might not be there. You know how when you first realize you're Israel and you hear the scripture, you got that zeal. You brothers know what I'm talking about? When you first, like, you want to know everything in one day. And it's impossible, but you got that burning sensation you just want to hear. You don't care about the football game, boxing. You don't give a damn. I just want to hear this. That spirit we got to pray back for. If you lost that, you better, Lord, give me back that spirit. Pray for that thing. Read that again. And they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way? And while he opened to us the scriptures. And while he opened to us the scriptures. See that? Look at Jeremiah 20 and 9. Jeremiah 20 and 9. Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 9. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But That was Jeremiah. He said, I ain't going to preach in the name of the Lord no more. He got sick of the Israelites. Go ahead. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire. You see that? He said, but the word of God was in my heart like a burning fire. That's the same thing Cleopas just said in Luke 24. Didn't our hearts burn within us? Read that part again. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. Mm. And I was weary with forbearing. I I was weary with holding back the scriptures. And I could not stay. He said, I could not hold back no more. You ever be on the street and I'll be like, I ain't going to, brother say, hey, I'm gonna, you going to teach bishop? I'll be like, nah, I'm not going to teach. Y'all go ahead. I ain't gonna, and I'll just be sitting there. And then a Negro come up, a dumb nooker. And I that, and then the word, the scripture's just burning, burning, baby. I give it a mic. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you get. You know, that's how you get. Give me that John 14, 26. <laughs> John chapter 14, verse 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. You know what makes me laugh about Christians? They say that they have the comforter. They say that they have the Holy Ghost. So the question is for them. You mean to tell me you've been a Christian how long? 36 years. You've been a Christian for 46 years. How long you been? 20 years. How long? 60 years. And the Holy Ghost never revealed to you that Christmas was a lie. The Holy Ghost never revealed to you that you're an Israelite. The Holy Ghost never revealed that you shouldn't eat shrimp, crab, pork, or swine, or pig head. The Holy Ghost never revealed that to you. It never brought none of that to your remembrance. You don't have the Holy Ghost. You got an unholy demon on you. That's what you got, sister. It's oh yeah, it's the sisters. You might find one or two little feminine boys that talk about they got the Holy Ghost, but it's mainly women. I got the Holy Ghost. No, you don't. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission, minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. I, you, I, see, we deliver the truth.